Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. So a couple of raw notes. We had the opening segment with Seth Rollins, Drew, and Punk. And this is like a blood death feud. Literally where uh, Drew threatened to kill him, to make him die. They're fighting over, like, a, a man's wife's honor and the dog for and God's And the dog, sakes. yes, the dog. Yes. Well, Seth Rollins is a referee. Remember when Shawn Michaels used to wear those shorts that were too short, the too banana tight? smugglers, And yes. people talked about those for, like, 30 years afterwards? <laughs> oh, God, Seth. He came out in a, in a referee's blouse. It was a blouse and a pair of leather pants that, I swear to God, they were so tight, he could barely get down the ramp. He walked like he just got off a horse. You, you got to go back and watch him trying to get down the ramp in these pants. And it's like it's like they're doing this this promo to set up one of the hottest death feuds in years at the Barnum and Bailey Circus. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's impossible to take seriously. Even Punk is like clearly irritated because he's you know, pointing out how stupid Seth's outfit is repeatedly. And essentially, Seth gets to do whatever he wants as a ref, and they got to deal with it or whatever. I love how his character started off as this Joaquin Phoenix Joker sort of thing with the ha-ha and all the, the laugh and all that nonsense, and then it turned into the Joker at the Met Gala playing every guest in every getup that they could find. I don't, I don't, it, there's times where it's fine. And most weeks, even though I don't like it, it's fine. But you actually have, again, a blood feud here. You have real life insults being tossed back and forth at each other. Tune it down a little bit. I, I don't know. To me, that that's that's me at least because it takes away from the overall presentation of the thing. Turns into a joke. And you know, the thing is, you know, Dave was arguing this last night like it's over, it's over. What's over is the song, okay? Listen, I think the song is it just sucks, okay? But the people like to sing the song, so whatever, okay? That's over. He comes out, they sing a song, they like doing it, fine, okay? But the idea that the the outfits are over... We have no proof of that whatsoever. He's he's had a million... I mean, there was a period where he was a babyface in wrestling gear, and he was massively over. And the fact of the matter is, I'll never forget this. He did an interview once, and he goes, you know, this is, this is actually the real me. And I was like, no, it's not the real you, okay? I know people who know the real you, and you don't walk around in public wearing this stuff. And furthermore, on television, if you've ever noticed... You know, when it's time for a serious promo, he drops the gimmick. So, like, if it's a real you, why would you drop the the gimmick when things get... It's just stupid. And it makes the whole thing, like, it's, it's impossible to take this seriously. And Drew and Punk are trying hard, but they weren't on their game. And it was fine. It was Let whatever. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that these three need to be reeled in a little bit and put on more of the same page? They're on the One same page. One of them. Page. As Drew and the Punk are on the same page. You believe they hate each other. Well, but as far as all the sniping back and forth and everybody taking a little bit away and taking the pee out of the other person, you know. No, that's fine. The people are okay. into that. Yeah, but, but doing you, that with a clown in the ring, it's just like, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It's like if Doink were the special referee. and it's like It would be like if before Survivor Series, like it's Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart, we're going into Montreal. They're at the peak of their hatred for each other. And Doink is the special referee. He's out there with his green hair and his, his outfit and he's honking his nose or whatever. Like, that's what we're talking about here. So it's stupid. We have Dink, too. We had Tozawa Notice versus the Creeds. So what happened here is Otis gets pinned. <laughs> yeah, Otis, not Tozawa. And then the Creeds and Gable beat him up, but the lights go out. And out come the Wyatt Six. So the question had been, like, are they going to wrestle in these ma the masks? No. They take the masks off. It is Joe Gacy. It is the Vintner. And it's a third man. And I was like, I thought I knew who that was, but I, who is that? And it turns out it was Dexter Loomis. You think that the bad apple was gone. Dexter Loomis has not had a match or an appearance on WWE television 
in 15 months. It was April of 2023, I believe, was his last match. Damn. He spent the entire time growing his hair out. He now has long dreadlocks. Well. I mean, he's got the tattoos. He does look like Kazarni. That's true. <laughs> Do you remember that don't, guy? Don't put that on him. <laughs> Dude, Kazarni was more serious than Seth Rollins in this He lasted this about gimmick. two weeks, and boy, that was a bad death. But anyway... So uh, they're doing a six-man. They debut next week on Raw against the Creeds and uh Do you think Chad those are, are real braids and real... Uh... It's been 15 months, dude. Yeah, but like... I mean, he may have gotten some extensions, but... He's a white guy who had like a straight white buzz cut. So I'm sure he grew it out and probably has some extensions in there. I mean, the, the same Tiffany Stratton ones that she used in NXT. Maybe he got those. We had a bunch of segments with the Judgment Day. Apparently, they're all going on their own on uh, at SummerSlam, which we'll see how that turns out. Somebody get JD some socks. So the story of this show was that they had all these matches, and quite frankly, a lot of them, I was like, oh, man, this should be good. You know, we had Gunther and Finn Balor. We had Sheamus and Bronson Reed. Like, these are matches that these could be good matches. And instead, every match, I don't know if it was because they were on sci-fi and they were like, why, why waste good matches? I mean, no one's watching. But these were the most nothing happening. One minute of action, four minutes of commercials, come back for some near falls and bad finishes. Up and down the show, every single match. So it, the, the wrestling was a waste of time on this show. But as far as like the angles building to, and I mean, they had angles and they had promos building up SummerSlam. And as far as a go home show goes, in terms of angles and uh, and interviews and such, I thought it was excellent. Like everybody's interview was good. The uh, Damian Priest interview for the Gunther match was good. The Gunther interview for the Damian match was good. Braun Breaker did probably his best promo ever, as he's he's just burying Sami Zayn. He's talking about how, oh, look, Sammy's got a uh, comedy special. He's doing the night before the show. You know what he's doing? He's getting ready for his next profession because he knows I'm going to kill him. And, yes, I didn't take him seriously. That was a rookie mistake. But he knows he's on his way out. I'm on my way up. And uh, while he's been doing telling jokes, I've been training like a dog at the gym, which I hope he's been doing better than that because dogs don't train very well. They're dogs. So anyway, he says, uh, the joke's going to be on you. The IC title is going to be on me. And then they go to Sammy later, and Sammy goes, yes, it's true. I'm doing a stand-up comedy special the night before SummerSlam. But I also did a comedy stand-up special the night before Money in the Bank, and I beat you. So I'm going to do it again. You got him. I hope before Randy Orton retires, we get Braun Breaker and Randy in the ring with each other, and Braun says, You want to dance, old man? I just think that would be great. We had Sammy versus Dom. Lame match, lame finish. You don't want to talk about Bronson Reed's ankle? Bronson Reed's? Oh, God. <laughs> I was dying. So they do this match with Bronson Reed and, and uh, Sheamus, which should be awesome, but it's like they give him... Just all, it's all during the break. And so they come back from the break, and Sheamus has given him the, the 16 beats. And Bronson is supposed to get his foot caught in the ropes. Okay? He's supposed to get stuck. But he can't. Can't get his foot stuck. So because he's supposed to get his foot stuck, the ref is supposed to help him get his foot unstuck. <laughs> but his foot isn't stuck. And so the referee has to pretend his foot is stuck and pretend like he can't get his foot, which is just, it's just draped over the ropes. And the ref's like, ah, he's trying to get this leg out of the way. So this was so Pete Dunne could interfere, but it was just so absolutely ridiculous watching the referee pretend like he couldn't get his leg off the ropes. Yeah, and then they cut away and cut back to it, and he was even more ridiculous waiting for Dunne to go up there and shillelagh Sheamus, so he at least got a botchamania moment out of the deal. I mean, he's got a heavy leg. They should have just said, his leg's so heavy, the ref can't lift it off this rope. Uh, Yeah, McAfee, as a former punter, could have brought up some sort of ailment that he had. So then we had... uh... A Gunther promo, which was really good. And then Damage Control has returned their baby faces. 
They're going after Shayna, Zoe, and Sonya. Team and, Forehead. Yeah, and then we had the main event, Finn Balor and Gunther, which, uh, so something's going on, okay? Because the whole match was built around Gunther going for a sleeper hold. And here's the problem. I'm all for coming up with an alternative finish or whatever, but, like, this was three hours of nothing happening matches. And so when the main event is built around a guy trying to put a man to sleep three hours into a boring Raw show, it's like I almost got put to sleep. And it's it's like Okada in the money clip. He just keeps trying. Finn gets out. He puts it on again. Finn gets out. Nobody believes he's winning with a sleeper hold, but he keeps trying. And then finally, he won with a sleeper hold. And so he goes to put the move on him afterwards, and Priest hits the ring. And Priest beat his ass all over ringside as a show went off the air. So I presume Gunther is winning the title at SummerSlam. I think that might be the big breakup of the Judgment Day. After all this time, Priest may, uh, or it's going to lead to the breakup. But, uh, I mean, it was it was a fine match. Gunther chopped him half to death. Brutally. But uh, I can't say, I cannot say you need to go out of your way to watch anything wrestling wise on this show but the angles in the uh in the video packages they were all good it was good summer slam build that was nice thank you for watching make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again